it's five o'clock on a Wednesday and it's time for... Craig and Ryland's Magic Review Show. I'm Craig. I'm Ryland. Did you almost forget for a minute there? Yeah. <laughs> Guys, welcome back to another episode of the Review Show. We have some interesting items. We've actually got some four brand new items today and uh, there's some really interesting stuff that... Uh, very unusual plots and uh, we're going to start off with a brand new packet trick that makes a real big claim that is kind of one of the greatest of all time. Let's have a look at that right now. So review number one is by Penguin Magic P3 Studios. It's by a guy called Alex Linian and it's called The Goat. The Goat? Yeah, dude, it's not a real goat. I'm not talking about, you know, eating grass and stuff like that. Oh. It's, it stands for greatest of all transpositions. And Penguin and Alex are saying that this is one of the greatest transpositions of all time. So do you want to watch it and you can tell everyone whether you think this is one of the greatest transpositions of all time? Yeah. Yeah, let's have a look at this. So, right, uh, I've got six cards here. I've got the four aces, clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds. And I've got the two jokers, right? We're going to try and do something uh, here that's kind of really... Are you ready to see something really weird? Yeah. Okay, cool. This is what we're going to do. I want you to watch Jokers and Aces, yeah? Yeah. Now, I need you to help me because what's cool about this is it all happens in the spectator's hands. So we're going to take the... Uh, I take, do, do, me a, uh, do me a favour. Can you hold your hand out for me? Very good. I'm going to pop the, uh, the Aces right there. Keep your hand nice and flat. I'm going to pop the aces right there onto your hand. Now bring your hand up a little bit for me. That's perfect. Uh, watch the jokers, yeah? Happens on three. One, a little bit higher. Two, three. That's when I've got the four aces. And if you turn over those cards, you have the two jokers. Greatest of all time. So there we have it. The goat. What do you reckon, Ryan? Well, it's really visual, but I don't think it's the greatest. Oh, really? You don't think it's the greatest, do you? Um, it reminds me a little bit of the sort of stuff that your friend Gary Jones would do. You know, he's done a lot of stuff where it's um, uh, like four aces and a signed card, and the aces and the signed card change places. What's really nice about this transposition, you are right, it is really visual. Uh, the other thing that's really nice about it, though, is it's a... I, I like transpositions when it's a, a different number of cards... Uh, and what I mean by that is you've got four aces, you've got two jokers, and they change places. So it's not just like one thing changes place and one thing else. And Gary does that an awful lot. Gary Jones does that an awful lot. He published a couple of those on iCandy. But the problem with Gary's stuff, not it's a problem, but it's very heavily intensive in terms of you've got a palm and you've got to do uh, sort of um, Vernon switches and stuff. And it's, it's not an easy routine to do. This is very, very easy. There's actually three handlings. Uh, the handling that I did is handling number three, which is probably the more technically advanced handling. Uh, but the other two handlings are really good as well. There's one handling that is completely self-working. Now, um, in terms of what you get, you get two gaffed cards. However, you actually get four gaffed cards. You only need two gaffed cards for the trick. But you actually get four gaffed cards. You could actually make up two sets of this but because of the gaffed cards that you get. Uh, you only need two of them, but you get four, which is kind of interesting. Uh, one of the handling used three gaff cards, but you know, it doesn't really matter. You could actually make up two sets of these. So you can have one in your close-up case and one that you could carry around in time anywhere. Um, and they, they say that there's two ways that you can do it. You can present it the way I did as a packet trick, or you can have the cards in the deck of cards and you can just take them out and say, here, let me take out the four aces, let me take out the two jokers, and I'll do a trick with the six cards. Um, so is it good for close-up? Is it good for close-up? Oh, heck yeah. Um, I think well, it's not going to be a stage trick, is it? People aren't going to be able to see it from a mile off. Um, I mean, I really like it. I've got to be honest with you. I do like it. I like the methodology behind this. I actually kind of did something a little bit similar to this on a DVD I bought out many, many years ago called Pentacle. Uh, and Pentacle 2000. I kind of went for a, a two for four transposition. Um, but they've got a completely different method to what I did. But no, I do like it. I think it's really good. It does use gaffed cards. Um, however, I, uh, I've only tried this a few times, but because they're holding on to what they think are the four aces, when you have the two jokers change into the four aces and they turn over the cards, the two cards in their hand, which are now the jokers, they can be examined, right? They can be examined. These cards can't be examined, but these cards can be examined. So... I think that people won't want to examine the aces because they've got these cards in their hand. At least that's kind of my thought process. I'll have to go out and do it a few times in the real world. Uh, I don't think that's an issue. Um, here's the thing. I think it's really good. What Do you like it? Yeah. 
It's a very easy routine to do. Like a lot of the Gary Jones stuff, you, your hands are too small to palm a card, aren't they? You, I mean, soon you're going to be able to palm a card, but not right now. Um, so if you wanted to do like a transposition like this, you'd have to kind of go down this route because there's no palming in this. It's quite easy to do. Um, if you're adept at palming, I'd have a look at the uh, the eye candy stuff. And I'd have a look at Gary Jones and Chris Congreve and what they do uh, and Lee Smith. But if you're... You know, if you're looking for a good transposition, this is a very reasonable price. You get four gaff cards, you get a very thorough 45 minute download, and the trick is works. I mean, that's the thing about this trick. You can tell that the people that have created this, Alex Linden, he's, he's really thought this through. You can tell he's really thought it through because the moves all just make sense. And the fact that he's got multiple different handlings to achieve this shows that he's actually thought about this, right? Okay, you can do it this way, you can do it this way, you can do it this way. So it's really nice transposition. If you're looking for a good packet trick, this is a good packet trick. Bear in mind, it's not examinable. It is an instant reset. Uh, but as I say, you don't have to treat it like a packet trick. You could actually take them out of the deck. I'm going to try this. I'm going to play around with this. I have a feeling that if you did this on... A table it would make a nice uh, thing for a zoom show as well because when you've got the two uh, jokers and they change into the aces you don't necessarily have to do the way I did the change there's lots of different ways of doing it including a shapeshifter so I think it'll work quite well for virtual as well um, or YouTube stuff or TikTok um, I'm gonna give this 80% I'm gonna play with it I'm gonna try it I don't know whether it'll stay in my act but it's definitely good enough to be in there in the first place I think you're right I don't think it's the greatest transposition of all time yeah but I think it's really good. Yeah. What would you give it? Mm, 100. Oh, what a surprise. 100% by the Kid Magician, 80% by me. Highly recommended if you like this sort of thing. Okay, so review number two. It is Omamori. Omamori. By Hanson Chen Productions. You know Hanson Chen? They brought out the thing with the dice, Sonic Dice, where you shake the thing and all the dice cut and change, change. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. And also the cookie... Um, that you make lots of cookies and we talked about using it in a kid's show. It doesn't really matter. Uh, anyway, this is a routine by them. This is very different to anything I've seen before. This is well different, isn't it? Uh, yeah. This came in, Ryan got his sticky little mitts on it straight away because he loved the idea of this. And you're going to just show people something basic with it. I mean, the whole idea of this is that the, 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 the opportunities and the options in terms of performance are just completely limitless. But you're going to show something really basic, aren't you? Yeah. Okay, so let's have a look at this and then we'll talk about what we think. Hey guys, um, I've got a pack of cards. Okay. And I'm going to give them a quick shuffle. Okay. Okay. Yeah? I'm happy with that. I want you to give the cards a quick cut, so like that. Yeah. Then put it on the table and we'll mark the cut. Okay, that's cool. Now, I've got this like... Japanese thing in my pocket. A Japanese thing, is that the technical version? Japanese thing, right? Yeah, I see it there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Put and, it down there so the camera's down. And here. it can help me uh, read people's minds. Really? Yeah. No way. Yeah. Okay, show me then. So you can have a look what that card is. Okay, you want to show the camera? Yeah. Okay, shall I put it in the middle? Bury it? Yeah. Done. Okay. Shall I put them away? Yeah, if you want to. Okay, done. Now, I'm going to read your mind. Are you? Yep. Okay. Look. Right. It's a spot card. Yes, it was a spot card. It's red. Yes. It begins with A. <laughs> yes, it does begin with A. Ends with E. Yes. Uh, the middle letter's K. Yes, you're dragging this out with a worse than Max Maven. Yes. Ace. Yes. It's red. And it's diamonds. Ace of diamonds. Yes, it was the Ace of Diamonds. Ace of Diamonds. Now, do you have your phone? Uh yes, I do have my phone. It's over here. Uh, can you put the torch on? Yes, young man, I can put the torch on. There you go. Done. Okay. Turn it over. Try not to look at the light. We'll put this over, but look, it actually says Ace of Diamonds. That is crazy. Amazing. Well done, little man. So the nice thing about this, just so you know, and we'll talk about it in a second, is that once you've done it, if you if you shine your light again now, nothing will happen. Uh, it's completely under your control the whole time, which is very, very clever. 
And, you know, Ryland just performed a very simple trick with that. He just did a card revelation, obviously. However, the opportunities and the options with this are limitless. There's so many different things that you can do with this prop. Um, I mean, literally so many different things, isn't there, right? Yeah. Uh, you could have, like, sports. Yeah. You could have symbols. Symbols, yeah, so they can think of a symbol and that could be in there, yeah. Yeah, you could have, like, uh, like different, like, like small people, big people, medium people, girls, <laughs> boys. Yeah. You could have loads of... You, could have loads you of talked about getting uh, getting people's initials as well, didn't yeah, you? you? Like, yeah, loads of different initials. Like, you could have a pack of people's different initials. Yeah. That would work really well. Uh, the yeah. opportunities are limitless. And, and what you can do is you can have this set up so that it'll show whatever you want it to do. And then literally just by, uh, you know, just, just in, in the space of like literally one second, it can show something else or it can show that there's nothing there. Uh, and it won't show up unless you put a torch light on it, will it? I mean, which is... Yeah, which is, I agree. Which is really cool. I mean, it is such a cool prop. What I like about this, you I like. Yeah, go on. You can do a switch uh, because it's not examinable, but if you do a switch, then it could be examinable. It could be examinable. That's one that's just been switched. And it's all really adapted, like it comes yeah. plain, but I've actually put stickers on here. It comes with lots of different stickers, so I've cut out and put stickers on there, which means that if you use a dry white marker, you can actually write on this and you can rub it off because it's like a dry white surface, which is really nice because some of the routines on the download uh, involve pe uh, people writing on the back of this thing and, uh, you know, changing and, 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 and ink changing and so on and so forth. There's so much you can do with this. One thing that I like the idea of, that I'm going to play around with is almost creating like an instant stooge and, and doing it as something like a card routine but having someone pick a card and then saying to somebody here have a look at this can you see can you see this what I want to do is I want you to hold this very good you look at it and, and I'm going to shine my torch to it I want you to have a look at this have a look in there nobody else will be able to see anything but they look in there and then I say what I want you to do is is look in there do you get an image in your head tell it tell people the name of the card well it was the ace of diamonds amazing and then when everyone else looks at it and holds a torch up to it they won't see anything almost like a crystal ball type routine but in this little wooden thing uh it's a very well thought out project isn't it i mean there's so many yeah. different bits and bobs it's a very thorough detailed download with so many different ideas and options as to what you can do um it, you know i mean to be honest this is limited purely by your imagination and what i mean by that is there's so much stuff you could do with this there yeah. is literally so and much it, stuff and it is very easy it is, isn't it? I mean, yeah. it's probably the easiest thing. Yeah, I learned, I learned it just before we performed it, literally just 10 seconds ago. <laughs> well, not 10 seconds ago, but a couple of hours ago. And how... I think you mean like an hour, just an hour. <laughs> well, you learned it before dinner, yeah. in all fairness, and dinner was about an hour ago. And what, how easy is it to change what it shows? You could literally change it in seconds, couldn't you? Yeah. So if you wanted to change the revelation, let's say you're doing table hopping and you wanted to change the revelation, you could do that in literally seconds in between tables in, in like 30 seconds. You could change what's on there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's really, really good. Uh, it, it doesn't have to be a force. You know, you could get somebody's details beforehand and, uh, you know, adapt it literally on the fly. And I like you, it. And, and you can do it closer. Well, you can. I think it's not the sort of thing that you'd want to do at a long distance. I think the point of this prop, it is a close-up prop, isn't it? It's the sort of thing that you want yeah. to have people close because they need to be in close in order to see what's going on with it when the torch is shined under there. Um, but yeah, I really because like it. On stage, even if you had the big screens, they, they couldn't really like see. It just looked like plain. Exactly. I'd give this uh, 88%. What are you going to give it? 100 I knew you'd like it. You're going to carry this around. I could see you putting this on a key fob and carrying it around to school and having it on your key ring or putting it on your school bag mm -hmm. and then saying to people, hey, you could do this to your friend at school. Who's your best friend at school? Leo. Leo, surname? Leo Jones. Leo Jones. So you could set this up so that it says LJ on there and you could have it on your school bag and you could have it so that it says their the initials and then when they examine it afterwards, they can't see anything in there. <laughs> How cool would that be? That Cool. That'd be cool, right? So there's so many different things you can do with it. 88% from me, 100% from him. Really well-made product, uh, limited only by your imagination. Okay, so the next review, review number three, we have Excalibur by Chris Yu and Magic Auction. And for those of you that don't like it, when I rant and they avoid the Friday night 
uh, rants, then please just skip this review because, and I'm sorry, Ryland, but I'm going to be kind of taking the lead on this review. This is absolutely, completely and totally dreadful, correct, thumbs down. And let me tell you why this is so bad. So let me explain. Okay, it's very rare that we don't perform a trick on this show. We always pride ourselves on the fact that we, we perform this. I have literally spent hours playing around with this, haven't I? Like on and off. For a few days, I've been playing around with this, and it's fiddly as hell. It is fiddly as hell, but forget about the fact it's fiddly as hell. It, it, it breaks literally so easily. Now, my official gimmick fixer is my wife, Sarah, who's behind the camera. She is the person who fixes all my gimmicks. She is an expert at fixing flippers and anything that breaks. She is an expert at fixing it. Sarah, describe what's happened to this gimmick. <laughs> um, uh, the technical term is it's rubbish. <laughs> put, put your fingers in your ears. It's crap, right? What, I've, I've explained to Sarah what it needs to do. Yeah, I've explained to Sarah what it needs to do. I've shown her the download and I've said, this is what it means to do. And she's like, well, it's not work. The little hole it's meant to go in is too big. And, and, and this is this. And it, I've managed, too much movement. I managed to get this to work once, right? Once, one time only. And I said to Sarah, look, let's just, I can take a finger out of you. Know, let's just go down and try and film it, right? I have literally sat here <laughs> trying to perform this stupid trick for you guys now for about an hour. He's getting bored. I'm getting bored. Are you getting bored? I was bored Your sister's sitting over here. <laughs> Thea, are you getting bored? Yeah. We're all getting bored and it's your fault, Magic Auction, because of your stupid Excalibur trick. Because it just doesn't work. And even if it did work, it's not that great. Let me explain what it is. It's a card sword type thing. So the whole idea is that you have a card picked with a miniature deck of cards. They sign the card, they shuffle the card, you then take out your pen, and under some very heavy misdirection, you do something that looks incredibly dodgy, and then you take the cards, you sprinkle them down on the table, you do this, and, and the card gets, uh, it gets stabbed on the pen, and then you take the card off and you give it them. They can't examine the pen, but, you know, they probably wouldn't want to at that point. It's meant to be a close-up version of the card sword, isn't it? It's meant, you've seen me do card sword on stage. Obviously, Richard Jones uh, won BGT with the card sword. Uh, it's an amazing prop for stage. And just because something works on stage doesn't mean that you have to do it close up. This just doesn't work. It's not been thought through for a few different reasons. First of all, the reason I've supplied you with a small deck of cards is because you need a small deck of cards in order to do this routine. But it, that just screams method. I mean, when, nobody uses a miniature deck of cards. So in order to bring it now, let me do another trick with a pen. I know I've been doing card tricks all night with a regular pack of cards and a pen. But now I'm about to do this trick. I'm going to use this tiny deck of cards. It, 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 it's terrible, okay? The fact that you have to use a small deck of cards is awful. Then you throw in the fact that the pen just breaks continuously. You know, I understand what I'm meant to do with this and it just doesn't work. And the t few times I've tried to do it, I've stabbed myself, literally, stop laughing. <laughs> literally stabbed myself and drawn blood with this stupid bloody trick. Right, and and it doesn't even look that impressive. The one time I did, the one time I got it to work was when you were watching me, didn't you? And we were just sitting around the dining room table, and I was like this, and I did this, and I stabbed the card on it. And even then, you weren't that impressed. You were like, "Is that it? Is that what you spent all?" What did you think of it? Terrible. Terrible. It's just terrible. That's the thing. It doesn't look very good. Look, if you want to stab a card with a, uh, if you want to do a close-up card sword type thing, look into um, John Bannon in Possibilia. He's got an amazing version of the card stab. It just uses a little uh, uh, Swiss Army knife, a regular sized pack of cards, and you can do this exact same routine um, with that. And it's yeah, so- Yeah, I agree. I know, right? I showed you the routine, didn't I? It's so much better. Yeah. Um, this, is, this is gonna break on you. You're gonna buy it and it's gonna break. And even if it didn't break and by some miracle, you got one that actually worked, it doesn't even look that good, and it is fiddly as hell. You've got to take this pen, which is set up in a very, very precarious way. Can I just say something? Yeah. Don't buy it. <laughs> You're not going to stop talking. That summed it up. Say that again. 
don't buy it. What are you giving it out of 100? Bearing in mind, this is 100% kid. Minus is one billion, trillion, gazillion. <laughs> there you go. Minus one billion, gazillion, trillion percent. I'm giving it minus one billion, gazillion, trillion percent and one because this is just the worst trick ever. This trick is abysmal. I'll go for 100 at the end. <laughs> Don't it's buy okay it. okay if you want to be a pincushion. If you want to be a pincushion. I might never perform again. My career is at risk because of this stupid trick. I've got more holes in my hand than... Oh, I don't know. Yeah, just don't buy it. It's terrible. I'm going to stop ranting. There's nothing more I can say. It doesn't work. It's rubbish. Don't buy it. Zero percent. Right, the final review is the note bill by Jota. But first of all, we have to file the last trick in the place that I think is most appropriate for. Do you want the honours? Yeah. Go for it. Say bye, Scalibur. Bye, Scalibur. See you, Scalibur. Anyway, moving on. The final review is the note bill by Jota. Come on. Who? Uh, what else did Jota release? You know this. Dreambox. Dreambox. Yeah. Dream box. <laughs> Mummy, Johnny Depp, chocolate, <laughs> and Spice Girls. Very weird combination. Anyway, we're going to be doing uh, uh, the note bill by Jota. Let's have a read of this. The note bill is a special device that allows you to change a bill, a note, a piece I'm of paper. <laughs> You're super sweet. Uh, a card in front of the eyes of your spectators without them noticing. Uh, it's really cool, isn't it? It's really good. You and I played around with this. You've got a little routine that you put together with it, with a pack of cards. Do you want to show everyone? Yeah. Let's do it. Okay, go for it, Brian. Right, I've got a pack of cards. Mm -hmm. I've got a... Um, uh, post notes. No. Wallet? Wallet, yes. Okay. A wallet and a Sharpie. All right, okay. We don't need these two, but we do need this. Got it. Okay, I'm going to give it a quick shuffle. You want me to put that over there? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good shuffle. Okay, <laughs> shuffle. It brings like that. That's oh. fine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, now. Yeah. What I want you to do is I want you to like lift up like a bit of the cards. Lower than half. Lower than half? Yes. About there? Yeah. Okay. Turn it over, put it down. Yep. And then about half, so deeper. Okay. Turn it over, put it down. Who are you, Edward Belducci? <laughs> okay. And then spread through. Yeah. And then put the face up cards there. Okay. And then make six piles of the first six face down cards. So deal six cards. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Six. Two big gaps. Ne neatness counts. <laughs> okay, cool. Now what? Okay. Shall I put those there with those? Yeah. Do you have a £10 note? I do indeed. Yes, I do, my little friend. There it is. A £10 note. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, right, I'm just going to put it here. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to open it up. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now each um, each note has like a serial number. This one is seven seven three seven seven three. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now I want you to write it down seven seven three seven seven three. Okay. Okay. Seven seven three seven seven three. Like that, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Seven seven three seven seven three. Yep. There we go. But the the cool thing is, do you know those cards that you put down? Yeah. Turn them over. Seven. Seven. Three. Seven. Seven. Three. Boom! Well done, Ryland. That's very good. Uh, and that's an example of can I have a ten pound notebook? That's an example of something that you can use. Um, the, the note bill for, what Ryan's used it for there is switching a note so you could do a serial number divination, right? Yeah. Um, it's very well made. It looks like it's leather, but it's plastic. It'll last forever. It's actually got magnets in there, so it locks now. So the switch is actually done really, really well, really, really easily. Just in the action of opening it up to show them the post-it notes, you actually switch that. But the nice thing is once it's switched without stealing anything away, you can hand this to the spectator and they can hold it and, and they've got the switched in note in play and they won't realise anything's happened. Um, so it's very, very clever. Now, 
just like with the other routine that you did, the sky is literally the limit, isn't it, in terms of what you can do with this. You can do so much with it. So on the download, one of the things that... Uh, oh, really? We're going down that road? No, I don't think so. On the download, one of the things that uh, he says you can do with it is uh, he talks about tearing a piece of paper up, tearing a, uh, a newspaper up. it. Yeah, yeah. Or you can do it as a prediction. So you can have them tear up a piece of paper, have a look at a word, write the word down and you can predict the word. It's big enough for playing cards so you can use it to switch playing cards. So you can have someone pick a card sight unseen. You could then have them uh, write the name of their card down on here. And in the action of doing that, they've switched it. Um, there's so many different options you can do with this. You can use it with sign cards, normal cards, bills, notes, anything. I mean, it really is a very clever device. And the beautiful thing is, it's an instant reset and it literally just fits in a pocket. So you can just pop it in your pocket and you're, uh, you're good to go. It's angle proof, it's easy to do. What do you think of it? Epic. You like it, don't you? Yeah. yeah it's really good. Huh? He's given it 100%. You know, I've got to agree, I think this is really great. I've never seen anything quite like that before, quite like this. It's a very clean, organic way of doing a switch in a way that absolutely makes sense. And this looks like the sort of thing you'd carry around if you had post-it notes and you wanted to keep them nice and safe. This looks like the sort of thing that you carry around with you. I could see myself definitely doing this. It's another great idea by Jota. I'm gonna give it 90%. You're giving it 100%. It's well worth getting if you're a commercial close-up worker. What happens if the post-it notes run out? And, well, that's the beautiful thing about this. They're just normal post-it notes. So if the post-it notes run out, you just stick some more post-it notes on there. So if I just rip them all off? I'd rather you didn't. But yes, if you rip them all off, you can just put some more on there. Uh, I think that the person who... I think that creative people are going to come up with some really nice routines with this. Like the thing that Ryan did with the Cut Deeper Force. That wasn't on the download. That was his idea. It was like, oh, let's do this. And, you know, it's a really nice idea. Um, lots of different things that you can do with it. Highly recommended. Buy it. And that's another review show in the bag. It is another review show in the bag. Guys, thanks very much for watching. Like, seriously, there's some really good items this week. And a terrible poo-poo one. A terrible poo-poo one, he is right. Uh, it's not very good at all. Please do not buy a Scalibur. But the other stuff is brilliant. Uh, really, really good. Highly recommended. Uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel. Let us know in the comments down below what you think of the, uh, what you think of the tricks we reviewed. Um, and uh, yeah, like the video. Make sure that you follow him on YouTube. What, you, what did they look for on YouTube to find you? The Kid Magician. Look for The Kid Magician on YouTube if you want to follow him. And make sure you subscribe to the channel. We'll be back again next Wednesday with another review show. I'm Craig. I'm Roland. We'll see you next week. Bye, everyone.